Editor at The Spectator magazine and host of Outsiders, Rowan Dean. Great to have you on the show, mate. Good to see you, Peter. Great interview yesterday. Well done with Mike Pompeo. Oh, yeah, he was... Very good. Tell you what, you see people behind the camera and then obviously we, we all watch them in front of the camera. And for years I've worked for politicians, so you get a good judge of yeah. the personal and the public. Um, but he was a really authentic man. Mm. There was none of that usual sort of, you know, totally barrier. Totally. Just spoke just like... You know, the plumber down the road yeah, or the, or the yeah, guy in the shop or, or, really or the woman front. just talked talked it straight, said exactly what he thought, which was unusual for a politician. <laughs> hey, the difficult issue of abortion, and it's difficult for everyone, I think. Mm. That there's no one who, um, I, I hope, no one who takes the issue lightly. It's moved, I think, well beyond a debate that we, we were having uh, 10, 15 years ago about the right... Uh, of women to choose abortion or not, we've now got right into this, I think, pretty terrible circumstance where it's a debate about late-term abortions. I mean, how late do you go? And in, in, in the law that's before the Parliament in New South Wales, you could go right up until the due date, basically, and abort a child for no other reason than a, than a list of criteria, economic, Social. I mean, what does that even mean, Rowan? Hmm. Well, it, it, it is a vexed issue, obviously, but uh, I think the Berejiklian government has been ridiculously irresponsible in how they've approached this. It's clearly a sliding scale. At, at, at one end, as you said, most common sense, rational, sane people, regardless of their religious beliefs or their conscience, accept that at the beginning of conception, that first early, early days, early weeks, uh, yes, the woman's right to choose, etc., priorities should probably be to the fore. But the further you go along that line, you very, very quickly, the rights and everything changes as that baby develops, as that life develops. And by the end of that period, I'm sorry, the woman's rights are no greater, in fact, arguably less than the baby's right to take that life that is now his or hers. But what we are seeing is you mentioned the, the left and the libertarian right. There's also a third group, which is the very weak-minded so-called centre-right people who just don't dare stand up to the left's push on this thing and somehow think, oh, we can pander to the left. And I think that's the issue here with the Berejiklian that, that, government. That's Turnbullitis. That's Turnbullitis. Absolutely Turnbullitis. You bet it is. And Gladys Berejiklian is heading straight into that, that path, in, into that trap. And uh, by the time you get to the end, whether you're a man or a woman, it's, not, it's no longer ours to decide. That baby has a right to life. By the time there is, as the poster said, you know, a beating heart or a viable person, I've been fortunate enough to see the ultra scan and see my child there as a human being, and you know that, OK, there's a real person. This is, ain't abstract now. This is a real person there. And uh, we do not have the right to take that life. And what this law is doing is making it uh, up to two doctors. I mean, give me a break. Two doctors. We've seen the, the ideology of the doctors that are in Parliament, for starters, and the ones that are running around Manus and elsewhere. Um, I'm sorry, you do not have... The politicians do not have the right, Peter, to firstly make it that easy for a baby to be killed, but secondly, to deny doctors their own conscience. So well, the politicians are putting their own conscience yeah, above so doctors' let's conscience. Let's jump in there to that question uh, we heard about today, Dr Hobart, uh, that is his mm. name, who was f really faced with a very difficult situation um, for him professionally, uh, mum and dad turn up and decide that they don't want to continue with the pregnancy because the, the child is a girl. Yep. Now, in my lifetime, feminists marched in the streets <laughs> exactly. about sex selection in Silence. places like China. Um, and, I, and I have to say, and I am a feminist, um, I'm a few, one of the few on the centre right who will say that, I, I have to say as women, we do not want to be in a situation, the most aborted gender is the female gender. Why on earth would we be allowing people in this country to remove a child from the womb for no other crime than that child's gender, than her gender. 
Absolutely, and there are certain cultures, and we're a multicultural nation, uh, there are certain cultures where women in, in the womb are worthless, girls, babies, oh, baby girls are worthless. China, India too, yes. And, and uh, we are seeing it imported into this country, and doctors who are speaking up under this new law, potentially, if a doctor says, uh, I think this is wrong, that doctor, as per Mark Hobart, is then in breach of the law and potentially further down the line can get struck off simply for objecting to this. Where are the feminists? Where's, where's the uh, you know, issue? Where, where's the episode of the drum with all the feminists there going, this is wrong, this is wrong? You won't hear it. The left, silent on this issue.